Hey guys, how's it going? Richard here with Alien Bros, and I hope you guys are all having an amazing day. Today, I have some incredible UFO sightings to share with you guys, one of which is something very, very special indeed, and I have to say that the first time that I saw it, my jaw dropped. We have footage of a UFO both in the air and another separate piece of footage of the same craft captured on the ground after the Brazilian military shot it down. It is actually insane. And after that, I have some news for you guys as well. We'll get into the Brazil sighting in a bit though. First, let's get into our other phenomenal UFO sightings for today. This first sighting comes to us from Brantford, Ontario, Canada, and was captured on June 10th of 2020. It shows what appears to be a genuine capture of a UFO behaving exactly in the way that Bob Lazar claimed the UFOs that he witnessed at Area 51 and S4 acted. For those of you that don't know who Bob Lazar is, which at this point I would find it very, very hard to believe that there is anyone that doesn't know who he is since his documentary and his interview with Joe Rogan garnered him so much attention. He claims to be an ex-Area 51 employee that worked in an area of the base known as S4, reverse engineering flying saucers, and there is actually a lot of evidence to back up his claims, and that evidence pile is only growing as time goes on. He claimed that the UFOs that he witnessed at S4 used a generator on board the ship to alter gravity to essentially pull themselves towards their targets in a sort of downhill anti-gravity roll to get around the laws of physics. However, according to Lazar, with the way the generators on these craft worked, they were not stable at low speeds and had a sort of weeble wobble to them and looked very funny while attempting to hover closer to the ground. I think what the witness of this footage I'm about to share with you captured may show exactly what Bob Lazar described, and I would love it if this video actually got shared enough that Bob Lazar sees it and can tell us himself if what I'm about to show you in this footage is what he saw. I won't get my hopes up, but it would be awesome if we could make that happen. Anyway, go ahead and check out the footage and we'll talk more on it after, alright? Here it is. Yeah, so in my opinion, this is one awesome piece of footage, and for those of you that know what Lazar claimed to have been a part of, you know that the way the object in this footage behaves fits in perfectly with his description of the behavior of the UFOs, or as he called them, AAVs, Advanced Aerial Vehicles, being reverse engineered at Area 51 in S4. For those of us that believe Lazar's story, and since his documentary, there have been more of us than ever, this footage may show us a true glimpse into what it was that he witnessed at the base. If we can get this footage over to him so that he can give us his thoughts on it though, I'd be absolutely astounded, and you know what, I think we can do it. If we try hard enough, I think we can actually get Lazar to see this. Guys, let's get Lazar in on this. I think we may have something truly unknown here in this footage with this object's strange behavior, and from what I can tell after analyzing it and using some editing magic to get an idea of whether or not this footage is solid and not a hoax, I genuinely believe that we have some strong evidence here to back up his story of the flying disc. Let me know what you guys think about this thing down in the comments. What do you guys think was captured in this clip? Alright, let's go ahead and get into the Brazil sighting I mentioned earlier. I originally saw this footage shared by my friend Tim over at UFO Man, and as usual, his link will be down in the video description. There are two separate pieces of footage here that I'll be sharing with you. There is a clip of the craft in the sky over Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, a place that we have shared many a UFO sightings from before, and it's starting to seem that there is something there that they may be interested in. And then, a clip of the craft on the ground, captured by civilians after the object was shot down by the Brazilian military. I will play the footage and let you guys decide what you believe it is for yourselves. After that, I'll delve into my analysis of the footage and give my thoughts on it, and it's definitely some out of this world stuff, that much I will say. Also, please note that the footage of the crashed object was captured by people in the area before the Brazilian military had made their way to the crash site and made the bystanders leave. The witness managed to keep their footage of the object, and I have to say that that is some serious luck. This footage may just prove that Brazil has officially obtained a UFO, and that is huge. Go ahead and check out this clip, and we'll get into it more afterwards, alright? Here it is.
All I can say is just, wow, guys, this thing is absolutely insane, and I truly can't believe this footage exists and hasn't gotten more attention than it already has. I hope this video will draw the attention to it that this sighting deserves, because this type of secrecy and lack of knowledge is why this subject is still crowded in so much mystery, and people deserve to know the truth of what is going on in the skies of our planet and the rest of the universe we live in. As you can see, the object in this footage does not look or behave like any known object that I can think of here on Earth, and it must not have been in the air legally since it was shot down. I'm amazed at just how close up to the craft the witness was able to get in film. I also hope that the occupants inside managed to survive the crash. If they did not, then this is the sort of thing that could lead to an interstellar war with an advanced species that we have no chance against. And if I'm being honest about what this craft reminds me of, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Dragon Ball Z, but if I were to draw the comparison, I would think it looks eerily similar to the Saiyan space pods Vegeta and Nappa arrived here on Earth in, and the Saiyan race as a whole used for for transportation. Obviously Dragon Ball Z is a fictional anime, but I can't really think of a more perfect comparison for it than that. It really does look like a sand space pod, just blue in color instead of grayish silver. What it is though, I'm not sure. Could it be an aircraft from another country like Russia or the US? It's entirely possible, but I doubt it. This thing just seems otherworldly to me and behaves in a downright strange manner with no visible forms of propulsion on the craft. On top of that, I've never seen anything like this anywhere on our planet and I think we may have a genuine ET craft that has been recovered by the Brazilian government and covered up. This cover-up needs to end. We need to throw this footage in the face of the Brazilian military and show them their secret is out and they need to tell the world what it is that they found without lying about it. I won't say that it absolutely cannot be from another nation, but this object seems very unconventional for anything aside from potentially using it to travel through space as though it is some sort of space pod type UFO. On top of that, the way it glows in flight is absolutely incredible to look at. This is some seriously crazy footage and it also makes me wonder what if these things can glow in different colors and flight. They seem to be able to hover and a lot of people have seen orb UFOs all over the place, most of the time just hanging out in the sky as if they're spying on us. I have even seen and recorded them myself. Maybe this object is an example of the objects that we have been seeing and describing as orb UFOs all along. Could these pods be scout ships used to spy on us, our governments, our nations as a whole? I can't say, but you know what? I bet that there are multiple governments that can, and I think we need to get some answers on this because this stuff is real. The Department of Defense in the US has admitted that it's real, and if there are officials that have answers, which there is plenty of evidence circulating that says that there are, then we deserve to get answers and find out what is going on. Why should only a select few people be allowed to know about a subject like this? This subject concerns all of us, and we should all be involved in a planetary discussion, rather than selecting government officials that could be in community communication and potentially put words in our mouth that are untrue and the majority of people don't believe. For example, how many of you actually think shooting down this craft without any prior knowledge of what its purpose here is was a smart decision? How many of you would have immediately resorted to violence against a race of beings clearly far more advanced than us that is likely capable of erasing our very existence, more than likely with little to no effort? Would you as an individual be up to back such a rash decision or would you want to take a different approach? Maybe they knew what this crap was doing here and maybe it was here to cause us harm. If so, then fine, but we should know too. We shouldn't be kept in the dark on this. We should all have a say in how we deal and converse with these intelligent alien beings and at this point, I think we have enough evidence to seriously demand answers and not be laughed at and called crazy by our governments like the one where I live, the US government, and by other citizens that have bought into the idea that we are not being visited and that there is no way that extraterrestrials are seeing us here on Earth without ever having gone through the insane amount of verifiable evidence, witness accounts, and now even confirmation of the US military's interest in the subject, at least on the level that they are interested enough to spend millions of tax dollars investigating them. We deserve to know where our tax dollars are going. We work for that money, and we should know what they are actually spending it on. Now, I'm not saying that they should open up their secret weapon projects to the public or their tactical plans against other nations that they're coming up with to protect us from other nations. But what I am saying is that when it comes to whether or not extraterrestrials are here and exist, we do deserve to know that. It may be the most important question that we could ever want to have answered and keeping it from us is doing an incredible disservice to the public. Think about all of the advances we could make in the private sector, so much faster than we already are, and how much they could benefit our planet as a whole. It's hard to say what they have, but it has to be something good that could in some way help us to create a better society, not only technologically, but maybe even bring us together and help find peace on this planet that we have held many a war upon. Imagine
imagine if we had their propulsion systems. Imagine no longer needing fossil fuels and the accomplishments that that alone would achieve. What else could they have? A way to end world hunger? Stop the fighting over what would then be considered primitive resources like oil? It's hard to say what we could achieve from this, but it may be exactly what is needed to save our planet and keep us from slowly destroying ourselves for the sake of money and an economy. Now, I do understand the importance of having an economy. I was a finance major in college, so trust me, I understand the need for an economy to create advances and to support us. However, economies, at least successful ones, are always advancing. Who is to say that we wouldn't adapt to these advances, learn from them, and create something new, something better than what we have now? I'm not expecting this video or myself to be responsible for the governments of the world disclosing their knowledge on this subject, but if I get to play a part in it in any way, then that is good enough for me. Let's work together and find answers to this phenomenon, and let me know what your guys' thoughts on this sighting are down in the comments. Alright, let's go ahead and get into our last piece of UFO footage today before we get into the news. This one was captured over Chicago, Illinois by my friend over at Chicago. Chicago UI, and his original video will be linked down in the description. It shows another orb UFO, possibly similar to the ones that we saw in the crash footage from Brazil. We have shared stuff from Chicago UI in the past, and many of you may remember him as UFO Files Chicago. I'll go ahead and play the footage for you guys now, and we can talk more on it afterwards, alright? Here it is. Oh, here we go. We got one tonight. It's not a satellite. It's moving north to south. Hey, hooray, we got one. Finally. Seventy Z. That's not a. It's completely dark here. That's not a satellite. It's too low. Plus, he's flying like. Turned his course to go a little bit southeast now. Going right over downtown where all the action is tonight. Seems to be slowing. And there he goes behind the trees. Let's see if I can walk back here a little bit and keep him in sight. Yeah, the sun's completely down, there's no glow in the west, so that's a self-lighted object. I've never seen any orbit like this for a satellite, so I've seen a lot of satellites around here. And it's dimming out as it goes over downtown, look. Uh, it's gone, it just dimmed out completely because we could still see it. 
could this be another orb UFO similar to what we saw in the Brazilian clips? I think it's definitely possible. Based on the way that it travels and how overly bright it is, I doubt that it's anything normal. Chicago UI told me that by his estimation, this object was hovering at about 5,000 feet and made no noise whatsoever. Could this be a scout ship watching the area looking for something? All I can say is that it is another odd UFO sighting and that Chicago UI has been seeing and recording these objects like this over his house for years and has tons of footage of these things over on his channel. And some of them really are amazing and you guys should definitely check out the footage he's captured. What do you guys think? Did he capture another one of these scout ships on camera? Let me know what your thoughts are on it down in the comments. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the news that I have for you guys today. It turns out that complex organic molecules capable of serving as building blocks for alien life are far more prevalent than previously thought in cold gas clouds and the dust that creates stars and planets. Researchers at the University of Arizona Stewart Observatory have revealed that these molecules also appear much earlier than conventional scientific wisdom ever suggested, potentially hundreds of thousands of years before stars actually begin to form. What does this mean? Well, as if the math wasn't enough, it means that the odds of us being alone in the universe have just dropped to basically zero. However, we didn't need science to tell us this with everything that we have seen, but the drift beat of information indeed continues as it has been for the past few years. These results threaten to overturn existing scientific consensus, requiring an environment heated by protostars, or stars in the making, for complex organic molecules to be observable. This study is the first to look for the signatures of two complex organic molecules, methanol and acetaldehyde, in a substantial number of prospective star-forming sites. Unlike previous observations, which have mostly focused on individual objects. Pre-stellar or starless cores earn their name because they mark regions in space where cold dust and gases could coalesce into the seeds that will eventually create stars and possibly planets. The researchers used the Arizona Radio Observatory's Kitt Peak 39-foot dish telescope to peer through the shroud of gas and dust of 31 starless cores scattered throughout a star-forming region known as the Taurus Molecular Cloud. The cloud is found approximately 440 light-years from Earth. Each core is large enough to cover the distance that would stretch up to a thousand solar systems lined up next to each other. Yancey Shirley, associate professor of astronomy who co-authored the paper, said, in quote, These starless cores that we looked at are several hundred thousand years away from the initial formation of a protostar or any planets. This tells us that the basic organic chemistry needed for life is present in raw gas prior to the formation of stars and planets. Ebiotic molecules, which provide the building blocks necessary for life as we know it, were already known to exist in space. However, it had proven tricky to understand where and how they form and the mechanisms by which they end up on the surfaces of any prospective planet. The exact processes at play are still being debated because the theoretical models still don't quite match what scientists have been seeing in their observations. This new discovery may change all of that and give us a glimpse into what the issue with what they have been facing with the development of planets or the potential for life was by letting us know just how abundant these molecules actually are in our universe. Pre-stellar cores are like windows into the earliest evolutionary steps towards star systems with planets and possibly even life forms. Fewer than 10 such objects have been studied for complex organic molecules prior to this study. Similar observations usually focused on just one molecule, methanol, whereas the survey described here specifically followed the evolution of methanol and the alcohol derivative acetaldehyde. For this survey, the team of researchers looked for the telltale signatures of the two molecules during an observation campaign totaling almost 500 hours of observation time. Methanol was found to be present in all 31 pre-stellar cores, and 70% of them contained acetaldehyde in addition to the methanol. The authors of the study consequently believe that they have finally found evidence complex organic molecules are far more common in early star-forming regions than first thought. And we all know what that means, don't we? We are much closer to the truth of whether or not we are alone in the universe. What are the odds that science comes closer and closer almost daily to the determination that the universe is in fact teeming with life? It is findings like this that give more and more credibility to sky watchers and the evidence that we have captured showing that we are being visited. I believe it certainly does help our cause. And as private non-government related companies and private universities move closer to finding the answers of whether or not we're alone in the universe, they also grow in bravery and come closer to ignoring our government's demands and tell the public about it, despite their insisted secrecy on the subject. I believe we will receive the answers that we are looking for sooner than we thought. We just need to keep working together towards it, and one day, soon maybe, we will be able to finally speak to these interstellar beings ourselves, without the government there to speak for us. Let's make that happen, and let's get this video over to Bob Lazar so he can take a look at the first sighting that we shared in this video. I really want him to see it, and I feel like he would love it. 
Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but stay tuned because there is a lot more coming and we will have it posted very soon. If you like the video, then please don't forget to hit that like button on your way out, share it, comment, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. It really helps us out and it'll let you guys stay up to date by sending you a message straight to your inbox every time we upload a video. And you can once again stay on the up and up with all of the latest alternative news. And remember, you have to hit the bell button or YouTube will not notify you when our new videos come out. Maybe also bookmark the page because Google seems to be censoring our channel. We are almost certainly being blacklisted and we need your help to overcome that. If you'd like to help support the work we do here, please feel free to support us on Patreon. We are currently working on setting up new tier lists for our patrons and we think you guys will love them. The link is down in the video description. Every little bit that we get helps us out tremendously and we are very grateful for it. Also, if you have UFO footage or evidence that you would like us to feature on the channel, please email it over to us. Our email is down in the description as well and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And for new updates on when our videos will be coming out, please go follow our Facebook page. The link is down in the video description as well. Together, we will find the truth. Thanks again for your support, guys. It really does mean a lot to us. And don't forget to browse the channel if you're new and get yourself up to speed. As always, I'm Richard with Alien Bros, and I'll see you guys again next video.